What does that mean? The square deviation from the mean is two thirds. It's very non-intuitive to try to understand a deviance in terms of these squared deviations because they're no longer in the devi the square deviations aren't in the same units of measurement as our original x values they're now in these squared units all we can tell is that samples with larger variances have more dispersion and samples with smaller variances have less dispersion but what we really want is an intuitive understanding of what that dispersion means and the answer to that is simply to take the square root of the variance. We're going to call the square root of the variance the standard deviation. So if you recall that the variance was s squared. So in order to take the square root of the variance, we just end up with s. And s is the standard deviation of a sample. Similarly, we had sigma squared as the population variance. When we take the square root of sigma squared, we get sigma. And if you look at the equations for the standard deviation, all we're doing is taking the equations for the variances, which are inside these red squares, and we are square rooting them. So we can calculate variance and square root it. We can calculate the sample variance and square root it, root it and we're going to end up with the sample standard deviation. What's nice is that the sample standard deviation, or the standard deviation is in the same units of measurement as the data, and it is the seen as the average distance of the data from the mean. It's the average distance from the data, it's the average distance of the data from the mean. Now, all of that is fine and dandy, except Standard deviation and variance still don't allow us to really understand the difference in dispersion when we're comparing between data sets that are measured in two different units of measurement. So imagine we are measuring, uh, taking a sample of trees, and we are going to calculate the, we're going to measure the height and the weight of trees. So let x equal the, the height of the trees, and we'll say that x bar is 40 feet. We went out and calculated that that the average height was 40 feet. And the standard deviation of the trees was 15 feet. Now imagine we also calculated the weight of the trees. And we calculated the weight in pounds. So we found that the weight y hat, the average weight, was 4,000 pounds. And we found that the standard deviation of y, so I'm just going to subscript that, the standard deviation of, of weight was 1,000 pounds. Now, based on this, can you tell me what has more dispersion, the weight variable or the height variable? Intuition would just tell us that, well, 1,000 is much bigger than 15. And therefore, there seems to be more dispersion in weight than there is in height. But really, we can't come to this conclusion. And the reason is that the weight is measured in pounds, and the height is measured in feet. And you can't compare variances between two different variables if they're not measured using the same scale. And here, feet and pounds are not the same scale of measurement. So instead, what we are going to do is introduce a new statistic called the coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation is simply the ratio of the standard deviation, whoops, it's the ratio of the standard deviation divided by the sample mean. So the sample, the sample standard deviation divided by the sample mean, or in the population case, we have the population standard deviation divided by the population mean. So going back to our example of trees, let's calculate the coefficient of variations. So the coefficient of variations for the, for the height of the trees is going to equal, let me just get it right, s over x. So we've got standard deviation divided by the mean, 15 over 40. And the coefficient of variations for the weights is going to equal standard deviation over the, the mean, 
1,000 over 4,000, which is equal to 10 over 40. So what now is bigger? We see that the coefficient of variance for the height of the trees is bigger than the coefficient of variance for the, for the weight of the trees. So in fact, we can conclude that there's more variation in height than there is in weight. If we weren't using this scale, uh, scale free parameter, the coefficient of variance, then it would have led us to believe that there was more variation in weight simply because the standard deviation of weights was a much bigger number than the standard deviation of heights. But in order to make it scale free, we're go we need to standardize these standard deviations by the, the sample means.